React's newest hook is incredible for forms because it takes all of this complicated code and reduces it to one single line. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use this hook with plain React, using it with Next.js, and how to use it with server components and server actions. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. In this video, we're talking all about the use action state hook in React, which is really nice for dealing with forms. So to get started, I have a really basic implementation of a form in React that doesn't use this fancy hook. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of code that goes into actually making a simple form work. For example, we need to have a reference to the input element so we can actually get the value we type into that input element. We need to be able to track the loading state as well as the data that's returned to us, whether there's an error or a success message. Then we need to make sure we handle the submit by preventing the default, setting our loading state, setting the data that we get from calling the save function or whatever our form does. And then finally, we just need to hook up all that information inside of our form. This part stays pretty much the same whether you're using the hook or not. Now, if we look here, we have this save user function. This is essentially what our hook does when we submit our form. As you can see, we pass it in their name. We wait one second to simulate something like doing a fetch request or saving something in a database. And then if the name is blank, we send back an error. Otherwise, we send back a success message. Relatively straightforward code. And as you can see, if I type in a name and I click submit, you're going to see I get a success message. But if I leave my name blank and I click submit, I'm going to be getting an error. So the very first thing I want to do is show you how to use this hook in React without any Next.js at all. Even though this is a hook you can use in Next.js and a lot of people use it in Next.js, it's actually a React feature. You can import it directly from React. Now this is a React 19 feature. So if you're still using React 18, you would just need to upgrade to React 19 or download the experimental React 19 version if React 19 is not out yet. Because currently when I'm recording this, it is still experimental. So now once you have that hook imported, what you can do is we can get rid of all of the information for storing our input ref, our loading state, and our data because this hook handles all of that for us. We also can actually get rid of this entire handle submit. We don't need any of this code anymore, and again, because that's this hook actually handles all of this for us. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to pass along an action. Now, this is something you can already do in React. You can pass along a function as an action here, and that's going to let you pass that information to that function. But this use action state allows us to actually get a bunch of information from it, such as a return value for like errors or success messages, and it'll give us a pending state as well. So let's come into here, and we're going to import that hook and call it. And that's going to give us a bunch of information once we call it. And that information is returned to us in an array, similar to how use state is returned to us in an array. And we're going to get three different things. First, we're going to get our data. Secondly, we're going to get the actual action. We need to pass to this action section. So there we go. That's going to be our action. And then finally, the third thing that we're going to be getting is an in is pending state. This is like our loading state that we're getting back. Now, to use this hook, all we need to do is we need to pass it a function, in our case, our save user function, and we need to pass it a default state. So what is the default state? We're just going to pass along undefined because by default, we don't have any data returned to us, but sometimes you may want to have some information inside that. Now, we are currently getting an error, and that's because when you use an action state like this, instead of passing along your data in some type of object or string or whatever, it's going to always pass to you form data, which is of the type form data directly from you know normal JavaScript forms. Also, when you're using an action state like this, it's going to pass along a second parameter, which is your previous state. And essentially, the previous state is whatever calling this function last time returned. So if you call this function twice, whatever the previous return value is, is this previous state. Now, in my opinion, I almost never use this. So I usually just type it as unknown and leave it blank. But the form data is something that you're going to obviously want. And in order to get our first name from that form data, we can just call form data.get. And since we gave this a name of first name in our actual input, we can just call that first name here, and that's going to return to us a string. So now we can get rid of this ref because we no longer need that. We have is is pending variable instead of is loading. There we go. And now you can see all of this is back to working exactly as it did. We got rid of all those additional hooks and stuff that we didn't need. And instead, we reduced our code down to essentially one single line and made some minor changes to how our function actually works. Now, if I give this a save, everything in here is going to work exactly the same as before. If I submit with no name, I'm going to get an error returned. If I submit with a name, you can see I'm going to get a success message returned. And the nice thing is I'm getting the loading state every single time. If I submit no name again, I'm going to get name is required. Now, one thing that you did notice, though, is if I have data on my form and I click submit, it's actually going to remove that data from my form. This is just a byproduct of how this hook works. I'm personally not a huge fan of it, but a lot of times if you're using some form state management library, it's going to keep that state for you. Or what you can do is you can just return down whatever that state is. So in our case here, we could just return down our 
field data, for example, and that's going to be our first name is the only thing we're returning down. And now on my input here, I could set a default value to my data dot field data dot first name. And now what happens if I type in something and click submit, it'll keep that data around because I'm just setting it as the default value. Now, I really love this hook because essentially it gives you all the things that you want from an actual form, such as the pending state and any data. It just gives that to you immediately so you can use it however you need. But you can actually take this a step further and use it inside of Next.js with server actions so you can call code on the server to do things like access your database directly. Because right now, everything that we've been doing is only on the client. We haven't actually touched the server at all. So this application that I have running is actually a Next.js application. So to create a server action, I'm just going to create a brand new file. We'll call it saveuser.ts. And all I'm going to do is take all of this code down here. I'm going to paste that into this save user file, export this as a function. There we go. And I'm going to make sure I mark this at the top as use server. And essentially this just tells Next.js that this code right here is a server action. Now in here, all I can do is just import that function that I had before. And now the really nice thing is all of this code is going to be running on my server instead of on the client. So I could even put a console.log in here and I'll say server. So now what I can do, open up my console and down here, whenever I submit this, you should see it prints out server to the console. I'll just do that again. So you can see that is printing out server. So all of this code is running on the server and it's interacting with everything that happens with the Next.js server actions. So this is really nice if you're already using Next.js. This is an easy way for you to be able to have a form with data, a pending status, and so on that can call over to your server with absolutely no additional code needed. You don't have to manage almost anything yourself. Everything is handled for you by React and Next.js. Now that's all you really need to know about this hook, but there's technically a third parameter that you can pass to the use action state. And this is a permalink, essentially a URL that you need to pass along, for example, slash events or something like that. And this third parameter only takes effect in very specific scenarios. First of all, you must be using a server action. So if you're using Next.js, for example, this is a server action that I've created right here. So we at least checked that mark. Then the second thing that needs to happen is your page needs to have not loaded your JavaScript yet, but the person on your page needs to have submitted your form. So this is a rather narrow window that they need to be in. Their internet needs to be slow enough that that JavaScript has not fully downloaded yet, but they need to be quick enough to input all the information in the form and submit it before that actually happens. If all these conditions are met, you're using a server action and they submit the form before the actual JavaScript is downloaded, what's going to happen is React is going to navigate them to this slash events page instead of keeping them on the current page. And it's going to pass along all of the information for the form over to that page. So you need to make sure that whatever this events page is has the exact same form structure in it and it has the exact same use action state that's using a function inside of it. Essentially, you need to have the exact same form on this brand new page that you're going to. If that happens, then React will pass along all that form state to that new page for the user. Now, I see pretty much almost no use case for this particular permalink. It's a very niche scenario that it would happen in. And in 99% of the scenarios, you really don't need this. So I almost always just leave this off and use this with just two parameters. And it does absolutely everything I need. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to make sure you stay up to date with all the latest React hooks and changes that are happening, I highly recommend you check out my completely free React Hook Simplified course. It'll be linked down in the description. This course contains all of the different React hooks that you need to know, and I'm constantly updating it whenever these hooks change or when new hooks are added, so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest of every single React hook out there. Again, I'm going to link that down in the description for you. And with that, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.